May 18th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Acts chapter 28 of the New Testament. After we had safely reached shore, we learned that the island was called Malta. The local inhabitants showed us extraordinary kindness, for they built a fire and welcomed us all because it had started to rain and was cold. When Paul had gathered a bundle of brushwood and was putting it on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened itself on his hand. When the local people saw the creature hanging from Paul's hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer. Although he has escaped from the sea, justice herself has not allowed him to live. However, Paul shook the creature off into the fire and suffered no harm. But they were expecting that he was going to swell up or suddenly drop dead. So after they had waited a long time and had seen nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. Now in the region, around the place where fields belonging to the chief official of the island, named Publius, who welcomed us and entertained us hospitably as guests for three days. The father of Publius lay sick in bed, suffering from fever and dysentery. Paul went in to see him and after praying placed his hands on him and healed him. After this had happened, many of the people on the island who were sick also came and were healed. They also bestowed many honors and when we were preparing to sail, they gave us all the supplies we needed. After three months, we put out to sea in an Alexandrian ship that had wintered at the island and had the heavenly twins as its figurehead. We put in at Syracuse and stayed there three days. From there we cast off and arrived at Regium, and after one day a south wind sprang up, and on the second day we came to Puteoli. There we found some brothers and were invited to stay with them seven days, and in this way we came to Rome. The brothers from there, when they heard about us, came as far as the Forum of Appius and three taverns to meet us. When he saw them, Paul thanked God and took courage. When we entered Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. After three days, Paul called the local Jewish leaders together. When they had assembled, he said to them, Brothers, although I had done nothing against our people or the customs of our ancestors, from Jerusalem I was handed over as prisoner to the Romans. When they had heard my case, they wanted to release me, because there was no basis for a death sentence against me. But when the Jews objected, I was forced to appeal to Caesar, not that I had some charge to bring against my own people. So for this reason, I have asked to see you and speak with you, for I am bound with this chain because of the hope of Israel. They replied, We have received no letters from Judea about you, nor have any of the brothers come from there and reported or said anything bad about you. But we would like to hear from you what you think. For regarding this sect, we know that people everywhere speak against it. They set a day to meet with him, and they came to him where he was staying in even greater numbers. From morning until evening, he explained things to them, testifying about the kingdom of God and trying to convince them about Jesus from both the laws of Moses and the prophets. Some were convinced by what he said, but others refused to believe. So they began to leave, unable to agree among themselves. After Paul made one last statement, the Holy Spirit spoke rightly to your ancestors through the prophet Isaiah when he said, Go to this people and say, You will keep on hearing, but you will never understand, and you will keep on looking, but will never perceive. For the heart of this people has become dull, and their ears are hard of hearing. And they have closed their eyes so that they would not see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn and I would heal them. Therefore, be advised that this salvation from God has been sent to the Gentiles. They will listen. Paul lived there two whole years in his own rented quarters and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with complete boldness and without restriction. Godwin, when Paul is talking to the local Jewish leaders, 
And he says, the Holy Spirit spoke rightly to your ancestors through the prophet Isaiah. And he recites from Isaiah 6, uh, 9 through 10, um, the same words that your son spoke in Matthew, explaining to his disciples why some people <laughs> will believe and some people won't. And it's so hard to read this because for such an incredibly long time, God, I was this person. I knew your word. I had been to church. I could probably pray with the best of them. But I had no relationship with you. I wasn't feeling anything with my heart. And the only way you can have a relationship with someone is to have that in your heart. And then there was this amazing time in my life where you decided to strip everything away from me. Uh, all material possessions, many people that I loved, uh, many people who said they loved me, <laughs> perhaps really didn't. And you took away these relationships, either physically removed them from me or a couple of them you took, took up to heaven with you. And then you systematically started removing material things from my life, stripping my life down to nothing. So all I had left was you. And it sounds so wrong that you had to take away all these things of the world to get my attention. But once you did, I had more than the world could ever give me. And my eyes were open and my ears were open. And probably the most exciting thing is that my heart was open. And we could have a relationship because you chose me and you allowed my ears to hear and you allowed my eyes to see what I needed to. And I know it's all in your timing. God, today I just pray for people who, who may or may not know your word. Maybe they've picked up a Bible before. Maybe they never have. God, I just pray that in your timing for them, that their ears will open, that their eyes will see, and most importantly, that their hearts will fill, and you will heal them from their past, from their past sins, from their past life, from their, their past bad choices, and you will show them this incredible world of peace and love and grace and mercy and forgiveness and your sovereignty. That you are in control of everything in this world. That there's nothing, there's nothing for me to want. That you've given me everything I need because everything I need is you. But God, I do get sad a lot of times when I have spent so many years wasting my life on trying to get the world to fulfill me. Hobbies to fulfill me, relationships to fulfill me, money to fulfill me titles to fulfill me, labels to fulfill me, when all along it was you. It was you who would heal that, that great big huge empty spot in my heart. Oh God, why can't they just feel this right now? I know, I know your timing versus our timing, but I just want everyone to have this joy in their heart that I have, this love that I have for you, and definitely this peace I have in my life that as everything goes in chaos around me, you just bring this quiet, peaceful, calm, unchaotic life to my world. And what's really nice to God is when I have that peace that you've given me, I'm able to help calm other people down as well. And so I thank you so much for that. God, please don't let my heart ever become dull again. Allow everyone to look upon you and understand what you need them to understand at that given moment and hear what they need to hear at that given moment. And feel in their heart that you gave them what you need to at that moment. I know we all have tons of lessons to learn even after our heart starts following you, God. But I know with you and my heart and with you and my life, 
and with you first and foremost in everything I do, then I'll make it through everything just fine. Because you will take care of me. Because you love me. And because you've never left me. I love you very much. In your son's name I pray. Amen.